Welcome everybody to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, I'm going to be working with a quarter sheet of Arches Rough. And we're going to be using kind of a fast and loose tonalist approach. I'm live streaming this, so let me just get my other Kindle ready so I can see in real time how the video looks and if anybody's coming in to ask any questions or chat. All right, we should be good. Okay, so the quarter sheet, I'm going to saturate this with water. And while it soaks up that water and stretches, I'll get the palette ready. Everything's good, has a lighting look. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to utilize sap green. This is Da Vinci brand. So I'm gonna grab some Venetian red. And I'll put out some Payne's gray and ultramarine blue, and probably some phthalo blue to kind of push this combination back and forth. Pain's gray we have out. Let me see if I have any ultramarine. I think that tube is like really low. Yeah, it is. Let's see if we can get anything out of this one. All right. Probably the last bit I could get out of this tube. Or probably use the back of this brush. Yeah. Let's get the glob out. We're good to go. Paper is soaked. Paint is out. We're going to use the Venetian red sap green combination to create that brown. We're going to paint wet and wet. And we're going to have fun. Okay. Let's get started. So I have the medium hake brush. Mixing these together to get a brown. And we're gonna come up with an imaginary scene. Might be based off of yesterday's scene. We'll see what happens. With the rough paper, and um, maybe just arches in general, I don't get as much of a wet and wet diffusion taking place whenever I use this technique. So this is kind of experimental for me, but 
I really do genuinely enjoy this approach and this color combination. So we'll see what happens. So this is um, a technique derived from oil painters Stuart Davies and Dennis Sheehan, where it's kind of just um, loose, willy-nilly, and letting the paint paint itself, and then it kind of just has a back and a forth textural approach. I'm gonna make this the sky, and I'm just putting paint in, and then wiping it back, kind of toning that area. And whenever you use the paper towel to do that, you're lifting the water up in that spot, so you can choose to leave it dry, or you can just paint right back in and get more water in there. You also have a spray bottle handy to utilize. seeing what I want, kind of sky cloud-wise. This element will either be a landmass or an extended shadow. I'll play around with it. Now I'm going to build up tonal values and also kind of a crispness of color. Also going to be wet and wet so they'll be softening. This will be water for reflection. Use paper towel to bring out elements. Within oils, people use paper towel or, um, and this is watercolor, or Q tips. However, for me, Q tips haven't really worked that well with um, 
the watercolor. And if you put texture in, make sure you vary it. You can also use a rigger for these lines. It's kind of a back and forth game of layering. It's, it's a lot of fun. neighbors out there mowing. I think I'm going to have to either mow this afternoon or tomorrow evening. We had quite a few days of rain and that really just um, <laughs> got the grass growing. Get a little bit more reddish, a little bit more Venetian red in that foreground. the way this composition is coming out. We'll have some water over here.
around here I'll have a tree come out. ultramarine in this mix now. This is kind of to change the, um, the greenish tone. You could also get purples from it if you want. Pull this. We got somebody in the live chat. Um, is Belter? Um, I'm just gonna call you Is if you don't mind. Um, how's it going? Thank you. I'm just uh, playing around with two tones, uh, two colors, Venetian red and sap green, to kind of just set the tone, and then I mix in ultramarine to switch uh, to put a little bit of purples, put a little bit of a uh, and very green as the next layer and then I have either Payne's gray or a thallo blue that I can utilize for um, my closer layers on top of that it's kind of just a back and forth watercolor um, a swiping and wiping and um, building up a textured wet and wet scene Share. And how y'all doing today? It's marine. Oh. Oh, well, thank you. Um. Yeah, the freehand, the loose watercolors. You, you they look simple and. With a little bit of practice, you can definitely um, get it, but they are hard at first. But you just kind of start developing a technique that works for you, um, an approach that works. It's all experimentation. I've been using, this is kind of like one of the techniques in my bag of tricks. And I don't know how long I've been doing this one for. Less than a year like this. This was um, carried over from oil painting technique by Stuart Davies and um, Dennis Sheehan. And also I've watched uh, David Usher use a similar approach with oils as well. However, you know this being watercolor, where it's an application and then a texturization, application, and a texturization, just a back and forth. Unfortunately, I cannot get Q-tips to aid me in this endeavor. Like, I have Q-tips, but I just can't get it to work, uh, to lift up the way I want to. Of course, you can use razor blade uh, credit card to scrape out tech, um, highlights and whatnot.
Okay. Now, let's see if there's anything else we want to put in this kind of background one. I also added the blues and the um, Venetian red to this. Sorry, the blues and the Payne's gray to this approach due to the drying shift that takes place with these two colors. I feel like those um, add ons help mitigate that. If we throw some thalo blue. Got to be careful of because thalo blue. I kind of feel like it's like a, a mentholated type green, uh, type blue or green. It's very strong, but um, you can mix it with these other guys, and it'll give you something that might sit a little bit closer, a little bit warmer value. Also, that paints gray, which I didn't wet. You can use that. In the more closer, darker areas. Oh, you picked up watercolors recently? Um, yeah, it's a definitely a beautiful medium. Um, what subject matter are you painting with your watercolors? I'm going to put a tree, a cypress tree. In this region here, I mix a more pure pigment, dark pigment. Of just exercises, plants and vegetables. Oh, that's very cool. Um, my watercolor. I started with Chinese watercolors which um, were the floral and the landscapes. Then a little over two years ago, I switched to Western watercolors. And um, I mainly just do landscapes, but I'm getting back into gouache and oils. And I've been doing landscapes, uh, still lifes, portraits, all that other stuff. So the cypress tree is gonna be here, the base. I don't want it to cut directly in the middle of that. Okay. Now, the cypress trees in the swamps in Louisiana, there's different types of cypress trees. The ones down here have these more um, triangular bases and that allows, I think, storage of water. Put him there. And then they have the cypress knees, which are just the roots that come up out of the water or out of the ground around it. Um, and if you're out fishing, that's like kind of the area you want to fish. So that's where the fish will hide. But they also do it on land and dirt, these type of cypress trees. And um, you got to be careful. They can tear up the foundation of a house, I think, uh, or go through the floor at least, or the cement. And do a secondary tree. Right here. It's a little bit of a recession. Give him his own knees or the illusion of it. Create that. Now
Usually with trees, I'd want to do something like an ochre or something on this side, or sienna, but because I'm doing this limited palette, I'll just um, kind of throw a little bit of warmth on that side with that Venetian red. Grab some paints gray, really build up the shadow in the corner. I want to build up the shadow here. Um, cypress trees, I think, are a type of pine tree, and they have those kind of pine needly leaves, I believe. So I'll try to get that pine needly effect. We're a little bit dry enough in those areas where we should get some um, crispness. even pull a little bit along the edge, a little highlight. Just using more dark in there, a little more pronounced root structure coming up. Letting the shadow blend into the shadow. You know, I haven't done any um, fruits in watercolor. Then most of the flowers were just um, let's see. Most of the flowers were in the Chinese painting. Yesterday I did a little bit of magnolias in a um, in gouache. And that was a study for a um, an oil painting I started for a friend. Let me fix this. Wipe that back. back in. You can throw a little bit of lines of paints gray in here in the wet and wet. Um, the trunks have kind of a, a ripple effect on them. I'm not quite sure what causes that. Um, but it's very interesting. I want to build up the darks in this foliage. Could use the paper towel for texture but there's really not too many lights that are going to happen in there so I can do a little bit but I just wanted to hit the dark side let me get a little bit more pigment on the palette so there we go we got the sap green So if you don't mind me asking, where do you um, get your exercises from for uh, for the plants and the um, vegetables for painting those? Or are you kind of setting up still lives or working from photographs? Pain 
everything's gray. Straight from the tube. I'm gonna kind of brush the edges so it's less texture on the edges. Kind of get the um, the effect of the eye, where the eye will focus on a few spots, but you'll have softness in others. So that's the concept, of, at least. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, photos are you know, great to work from. I, um, I'll set up a still life. I'll photograph the still life and I'll, I'll use the photograph. People say you can tell the difference when it's painted from a photograph or first still life. And I'm not, I don't really remember what the difference was, but, um, But I don't know. It might just come down to personal preference, but you know, a lot of people say that there is a difference between the two. I'm just not sure what it is. Um, any resources for beginners? Okay, so I put up a lot of YouTube videos under um, my actual name, Andrew Broussard Watercolors. I, I might have a link for that in the About Me section. Um, there's like tons of free videos. Um, some of it with figure painting, portrait, landscape, um, different palette combinations, things like that. There's Stephen Cronin, who I've, um, he's the one that I started learning from. Uh, he has a lot of YouTube videos. There's Joe Menza, who uses the same type of brush as me as well. And uh, me and him admin a Facebook page called um, Ron Rants and Disciples. There's Lois Davidson, who does the same brushing technique. David Usher, Alan Owen. All the people I'm mentioning right now are mainly landscape painters. Um, for Chinese brushwork, look up Blue Heron Arts. Um, he'll have flowers, um, landscape, animals like pandas, things like that. And that'll be in a fast and loose Chinese approach. And they have a website where they sell a whole bunch of materials. Who else? Um, Rick S on YouTube. He has a lot, a lot, a lot of tutorials. I think he has one with negative painting and he has one on painting rocks. Yeah, I think he might have like two or three on how to paint rocks. Um, I think one or two with the negative painting. I don't know if you have, I should have said grab a pen and paper so you could write all this stuff down. Um, who else? There's a big YouTube channel called Mind of Watercolor where the gentleman does a lot of uh, different watercolor experiments. He actually has a technique that he calls spontaneous technique, which I kind of utilize. And so Mind of Watercolor has the spontaneous techniques and he has a lot of different things on there. Um, Book-wise, go on to Google or Amazon and there's this artist, he passed away. 
Uh, Zoltan Szabo. Z-O-L-T-A-N space, so that's his first name, Zoltan. Szabo. S-Z-A-B-O. I'm not sure if he was Hungarian or Greek, but I think he had moved to Canada and then came to America. And he produced a lot, a lot of books um, with a lot of beginner experimentation. Um, you know, wet and wet, uh, charging in colors, doing different things along those lines. I have quite a few of his books. Um, but look him up. You can find those books for probably 3 or $4 off of eBay. Same thing with Ron Ranson books and James Fletcher Watson. Those are also landscape painters. Um, so, as you can see, a lot of my my stuff comes from um, other landscape painters. You know, a lot of different those techniques. Um, who else? There's Facebook pages that could probably help. Um, uh, watercolor technique and tips, or watercolor tips and techniques. That's a page I post on. I post these tutorials there once in a while. Um, but with that page, you're required to kind of share your information and what you did with the painting. So there's a lot of different painters on that page that'll share different techniques, either progression photos or um, yeah, either progression photos or links to videos, and that'll have different subject matter. Uh, one thing for you to see, actually, that you really always want to pay attention to with watercolors, especially fast and loose, is um, the color shift that takes place when you dry off. I'm going to do uh, a tonal shift. So when I dry this off, it's going to lighten up some. Um, I did put a lot of pigment in, but what happens, it might not lighten up that much because I developed this palette to kind of counteract that, but what happens is if you think of cement when it's wet or blacktop when it's wet, it looks darker, and when it dries, it looks lighter. Wrote the names down, definitely going to look them up. Awesome. Then um, we have water here. And water, uh, through physics and all that, it causes a, a refraction of light and it changes the way it looks. Same thing with wet cement, wet blacktop. When you dry it, just like wet cement, blacktop, it lightens up. So I'm going to put the blow dryer on for a second and just watch, especially the darker areas, how they lighten up. Um, hopefully, I mean, I, I don't like having that uh, shift take place, but hopefully it's visible enough just so you can see it see what I'm explaining. So here we go. So you might have seen some lightning take place um, on my end I did on my Kindle that I, I kind of watched the live stream on I saw a little bit of lightning in this spot on the live stream so it might have not come through as much as 
what it usually is. Uh, let me get a piece of paper real quick. I'm going to write something down here. Let's see. So that was kind of just to show how when you dry it will do that. If you want. So I'm going to write my YouTube and my Instagram. It's Andrew Broussard. watercolors of course I don't have room watercolors and like I said I have a lot of free videos there um, I also have the Instagram um, and you're welcome to check all those out and that's a way if you I mean you're obviously welcome back to the stream and you know I'd love for you to you know give me a follow or a like or whatever it is but regardless what I'm getting at here is um, you can send me a, you know, uh, a follower request or whatever on Instagram or comment on YouTube and I'll do whatever I can to help you out. You know, if you um, have any questions about different websites, different artists that I can gear you towards. Um, that's the whole point of this stuff is to just, you know, have fun, but also give you guys some um, idea and direction. And I could also gear you towards other uh, Facebook pages and things like that. There's also another watercolorist on YouTube, on, on Twitch, who I'm friends with. He recently set it up. What is his name? Watercolor My Way. Or My Way with Watercolor. And we're friends through the um, that Facebook page that I said that I admined, which was the Ron Ranson watercolors. Ron Ranson. If you look that up, check that out. But watercolor my way. He does landscapes. I think he might do some, you know, um, ideas of people and whatnot in his, and some buildings and stuff like that. And it's really cool because he's a, a veteran, I think, and I think he's disabled. Um, and he winds up having a lot of art shows that go to benefit, um, I think maybe the, his fellow people that are disabled or people in wherever he's at. So he, um, that, that's, that's Watercolor My Way, really nice guy and does a lot for his community. Um, and of course, like I said, there's Joe Menza if you're looking for more, um, he paints in the same style, but he has a more Bob Rossian approach and all that. And um, David Usher. And Alan Owen. And Lois Davidson. Um, I think she has, she might have a little bit of flower stuff. And Rick S. Rick S is the one that I was telling you about with rocks and all that. If you type in Rick Watercolor, it'll come up. I just can't pronounce his last name or spell it. And he has like just professional stuff set up. Oh, and the Chinese stuff. I think it's David Lee. Is it David? Lee, but it's Blue Heron Arts. Okay, so that's a whole bunch of different people for you to check out. Like I said, hopefully that helps. And um, the whole point, you know, me putting myself out there. I mean, obviously, you know, I want to promote my art and all that other stuff, but yeah, I want you guys to. You know, succeed and have all these resources. So since it's dry, we'll put a mat over it so you can see what it looks like. That's one thing. That's the biggest recommendation I can give is paint in a standard size. This paper is 11 by 15 and I can buy mats that are pre-cut in bulk that have an opening 
for 11 by 15. The opening is probably 10 and 5 eighths by 13 and 5 eighths, something like that. And it makes matting um, a lot, a lot easier. There's other sizes that are standardized. This would be for an 8 by 10. And then it would fit in a very easy to find frame. And I have one more mat just to give you an idea. And this would be for a five by seven image. And I mean, you could buy, say a hundred of these front and back paper for $50, I guess, um, or 50 of them for that much. The eight by tens, you could get 25 packs or 50 packs for $50, I think. 25 packs front and back in these cost me about $90, but it comes out to four or $5 a set and if I was to go to Hobby Lobby of the store, it'd be $15 or more. So anyway, I hope that helped. There's all that information out there for y'all. I will talk to y'all soon, and have a great day. Goodbye.